Welcome and thank you for joining us for the Envelope Live screening series. My name is Dawn Burks and I'm an assistant editor and sometimes writer for the Los Angeles Times. Today, we're having a conversation about Power Book Three, Raising Canaan. Raising Canaan is a prequel to the hit drama Power on Stars. It's a coming of age story for its central character about how he went from boy to criminal mastermind. Joining us today, we have Patina Miller, who plays Raquel Rock Thomas on Raising Canaan. She's probably best known for Broadway, a Tony nomination for her debut in Sister Act and a win for the revival of Pippin. You've probably also seen her in Madam Secretary and in Hunger Games Mockingjay Parts 1 and 2. We also have today showrunner Sasha Penn. He's also the creator and producer. He's worked on Survivor's Remorse, my favorite show, one of them anyway, and Power, Original Recipe. He wrote the story for Creed 2, and who could forget Disney's Imagination Movers. Welcome. Welcome, Sasha. Welcome, Patina. Thank you Hi. for having us. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad to see you guys today. I've been like jonesing for someone to talk to the show about, and who better to talk to about it than the lead and the showrunner? <laughs> 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 so we're going to hop right to it. Um, something I've been wanting to ask, why do you think the show, the power universe as a whole, books one through four have become such a cultural touchstone? Um, I think that, you know, you know, when you work on one of these shows, you, you realize all the different parts, you know, it's like, if, if I could tell you what makes a show successful, I would, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here. I would, my assistant would be handling this, um, but, uh, but, you know, it's, um, it's, you know, it's always a combination of things. It's, it's the writing, it's the performances, it's the direction. I think also, as it relates specifically to the power universe, I think it speaks to an audience that may be somewhat underserved on television. Uh, there aren't a lot of shows like Power that are sort of geared towards the audience that seems to really sort of embrace the Power universe. So I, I think it's a lot of different things, but I will always go back as a writer to uh, to the writing and the performances. Um, I really feel like that's what makes the what, what's made all the shows really, really successful. And I would say, I would say um, to that, I think. Just being an actor, the the characters are so raw. The characters are so relatable, um, which you know it makes it easy for people to sort of see themselves in there in some way. I mean, every character is three dimensional. You know what I mean? You're not getting one note characters within the universe, and that's what I love about the writing is that they've really paid attention to that. And um, you know, it just it's just so clear. You know, the characters are so clear, and it makes it easy for people to sort of um, go along for the ride and, and love it. Okay. So the fans of the Power Universe are not shy, not in the least. Mm -mm. Were you prepared no. for the fervor <laughs> that would greet you? Um, I mean, I guess I'll go first. You know, I was warned very early not to go on Twitter, uh, which of course I did immediately. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was... You know, I've known Courtney Kemp, uh, who's the original creator of of Power, and sort of the, her and Fifty Cent are the, the the masters of this universe, so to speak. Um, you know, so she sort of she sort of warned me beforehand, and I, I know what she's been through. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, there's a very passionate fan base who have a lot of opinions and a lot of thoughts, and and what's amazing, I will say for me, is a lot of times they'll speculate on stuff in terms of where things are going or what's gonna happen, and a lot of times they'll get it right, and then a lot of times they'll have better ideas than we do, you know? <laughs> um, so it's really, it's sort of a fascinating back and forth, and obviously in this era of social media, they have access to all of us and we have access to them in a way we never had before. So it's an interesting sort of period in television history where there is that type of back and forth between the audience and the creators and, and actors and whatnot. Yeah. So, you know, the fans know how the story ends you, and you two know how the story ends. Um, how did that inform Sasha, how you approached the material for Raising Canaan. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's that was always the real challenge, right? Is that when you know how a story ends, what can you do with that story? So it really became the the challenge really became like how to deconstruct this character and make his journey one that's interesting. So even though people know how the story ends, they're still along for the ride. And in the case of Kanan, who was a, a, a pretty polarizing character on the original Power, you know, he's he's kind of a sociopath, and you know, sociopaths are not always the most interesting characters to explore. Sometimes they can be, um, but you know, it also gave us this really amazing opportunity to create a narrative, a history, a mythology for this character that brought him from being a kid to being, you know, frankly, the character that Fifty Cent realized so well in the original, in the original series. So, you know, that was the challenge, but it was also the opportunity. Um, and I think, you know, we've, we've, you know, so far so good. I feel like the, the, the story we're telling feels like it is connected to who this character becomes. And so I, again, that, that's what makes it really exciting. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you can watch this without having watched the others, which is something that I really like, you know, and Patina, you get to come in here and make something like wholly original, you know. Um, how would you describe Rock to someone uh -huh. who's new to it? Yeah, how would you describe her? How would I describe her? I mean, the easiest way to describe her would probably be a badass, but you know, that's like the top, she's a badass. But no, she's a mother. She is um, a mother raising a 15-year-old kid. Uh, she's the CEO of her company. She happens to be in um, the drug business. Um, she is the sole provider for her family. She employs all of her family. And, um, you know, she's just this woman who has a goal and wants to raise her kid. You know, she wants to to, to, to be the best at her job, but also wants to be the best mother. So I would say like, that's who she is. There are a lot of different um, characteristics that, uh, that she has and that I get to play that, you know, it's not just her being strong, but, you know, she's vulnerable and she wants love and, you know, she's a dreamer and, you know, I think she wants what everyone wants, but at the end of the day, she is a badass. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I would I would just add to that, you know, early on in the conversations that Patina and I were having about the character, it really, it really did, you know, where we started is this was a single working mom, right? Yeah. As Patina was saying. And, and and while her office is different than like where Sheryl Sandberg goes every day, and the stakes may be different, the pressures are yeah. remarkably similar. You know, the juggling that you have to do is remarkably similar. And so I think that, you know, you were asking earlier, why are these, why have these shows become a cultural touchstone? And Patina was saying, well, because I think the characters are relatable. I think fundamentally that's what makes rock work for a lot of the, the people that watch the show. They're, as, as different as her life may be from theirs, there's still things about her that really connect to their own experiences. And I think that's, that's not just the secret of Raising Cain. I think as Patina was saying, that's the secret of power in general. And that makes me think about um, the relationship that Rock has with her son. Like, they're together to the end and together through everything. And you have a lot of scenes with Makai. Like, has any sort of extra bond formed there? Of course. I mean, we bonded straight away from our very first, uh, his table read, I came in. Um, I, my greatest joy is being able to work with really talented actors. And so from the very beginning, I had already fallen in love with the character of Rock and I kind of had an idea of what it could be. And, you know, hoping that the character playing Kane, the, the actor playing Kanan would be game to co go and kind of do what you're doing. Right. Because I tend to give 100 percent always. Uh, that's just me. I throw myself into the work. And so Makai and I met at his screen test and you know, it's, there weren't easy scenes that he had to put down. They were really intense scenes. Um, and him and I just locked in and we went for it. And, you know, just us vibing out and working together after that point, I just knew that we were going to have a great time. And I've learned so much just from watching him. He's learned from me and we really work together and we listen to each other, which I think is important in the relationship. I have so much love and so much respect for him. So yeah, we definitely formed the bond. 
that's so this is a this is a geek out fan question. Who's Rock's favorite brother? Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh <laughs> well, the beginning of uh the, uh, the 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 season it probably we would we could have said um Lulu mm-hmm. um and not Marvin but you know honestly um, they're both she loves them both equal I don't think she has a favorite Lulu is probably the one she can depend on a little bit more um for those I don't want to give too much away if if you haven't watched but you know she definitely butts heads with them um you know it's family you love them and you hate them I think she loves them equally but the one she could probably count on the most is Lulu until she and this, can. This, this show feels a lot about accountability too, which is another relatable thing. Um, and Rock is accountable for so much. You have yeah. to dig deep to get into that. Like, how do you find, how do you climb your way out of it as an actor? I mean, well, I will just say, just a little history. Um, I know what that pressure is like, right? I know what it's like to have everyone depend on you. I was the first in my family to go to college. I have been the first to do a lot of things in my family, um, you know? And so that weight and that pressure, I understood that from the very beginning. My mom had me at 15. Rock had Kanan at 15. So I understand what that is like. I understand having to, 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 to fight, and really fight and persevere and go through some stuff. And I just brought all my own experiences into this. And that's why rock for me doesn't feel like I'm acting. It just feels like I know, I know what this character is. I know what the character is fighting for because I've lived certain pieces of her. So um, yeah, I'm drawing on a lot of experiences, but that whole carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, I I've done that. I, um, I've been fortunate enough to to do that and want to do that for the people that I love. So, did, did you guys workshop your your voice, the cadence, everything, even your posture, and all of that is just like so completely different than what you are. Like, how did you come to that? I love hearing I love it. Oh, thank you. You know what? I'm a, I'm such a geek when it comes to acting. Um. I, I I loved, you know, having the technique, going to school and all those things. When you're in school, you're like, ah, God, what are we doing all this stuff for? Does this really help? And so for me, it's been like part of the thing that I love is being able to pull out different things from my training, from uh, all the technique stuff that I worked with to finally get a character who who I could really just bring so much to with all of these these things in my tool belt. And so for me, I worked before I wanted to find her voice. I really wanted to find her cadence, her rhythm, the way she spoke. I wanted to sound unlike anyone that anyone had ever heard. Um, I wanted it to be memorable. I wanted her stature, her posture. So I worked a lot on um, creating rock uh, before we even got there. I worked with a dialect coach who was amazing. I listened to so much stuff um, and I just sat and I, you know, a, a, an actor's greatest joy is being able to sort of build a character for me, you know, and like do something different. And so I just brought all those actory, nerdy things. And um, I'm, I'm happy that uh, it's uh, it's going well, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and if I could if I could jump in just very quickly on that uh, and I will I will. You know, uh, part of the best, the best part of being a writer is when you have an actor who can take the material that you have and elevate it, right? And take it to a place that you didn't necessarily expect or anticipate. And that is the greatest joy of working with, uh, with Bettina Miller. Um, I mean, she is, she says she's a geek, but what she is is she's incredibly talented and she works incredibly hard. And by the way, everyone on this set, including me, sort of follows her lead. Um, because when the person who's number one on the call sheet, as we refer to them, is, is putting in that kind of work and has that type of dedication and, frankly, that kind of talent, everyone else follows suit, you know? And I know that this, what we're doing here is it's for the Emmys or the awards or whatever. And, you know, I, I don't know how many people who vote on the Emmys watch Raising Cane, and that's probably a, a separate conversation for all of us to have. But what I will say is that if they're not watching it, they're missing out, I think, on in my mind, and obviously I'm biased, but I, but I truly believe this, 
one of the best performances on TV in the past two years. I mean, what Patina has done, what she does is, you know, I mean, there's a reason why she won a Tony. And, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing. And as she talks about her personal experience, she draws on all that. You know what I mean? She brings all that to the character, which that's not on the page. You know, that's not something that we write. That's something that only the greatest of the great actors can fully realize and, and create. And that's, you know, that's what Patina does. And, and I think, you know, all of us are, are lucky to be around it on a daily basis. Sasha, are you a wizard? Because you just answered my next two questions. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just throwing all her flowers to her while she's here. And it's a beautiful thing to see. So let me rifle through the question. Um, sorry. Sorry. It's but okay. no, I mean, I, 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 will, I will, as you look through your questions, I'll tell you that, you know, Bettina's talking about when we first were casting these roles, we had Patina do what we call a chemistry read. Um, did I lose you guys? I'm, I'm here. still here. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, we, we have Bettina do what we call a chemistry read, which is where she and Makai, who we had already identified Bettina as rock, but we were still sort of going through the paces with, with, um, with Kanan, and we brought Bettina in to do a chemistry read with Makai, and literally from the, from the outset, you were like, oh, that's, that's his mom. You know, I mean, it was the, the, the chemistry, I call it the chemistry, was so clear and apparent and obvious. It was just sort of, you know, we all kind of just like leaned back in our chairs because we knew that the decision had been made and we all just sort of sat there and watched and enjoyed it. You know, it was, it was an amazing moment. It was the best. It was honestly the best experience ever. Really the best experience ever to know like, oh, this is this is the person I'm going to ride out with. This is my partner. And, you know, you hope that the chemistry reads are like that. And some of them are good. Some of them are not. But this one was truly, um, truly special. Yeah. For each of you, what was the best thing about watching the words come to life? For me, what I envision, um, because, you know. Sasha is really talented, so amazing. I mean, I can, it's an actor's dream, honestly, to be able to work with someone who gets you, who understands um, what you bring to it, understands the world, um, and also as a collaborator. So from, the, from seeing it from the jump, just reading, reading it, I had already envisioned like, oh my God, what it could be. And the fact that it has like exceeded anything I could have ever imagined in terms of like what it's doing, um, that's the most, that's the, that's the best feeling in the world for me is being a part of a project that I was the champion of when I first read the script and wanted to do it so badly to still being that same thing, still having that same feeling about the work. So I, um, it's been wonderful for me. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, whenever you do something like this, it's a leap of faith. You know, you don't know if it's ultimately going to work. You know, you, you try to get the best people. Uh, and in the case of, of Raising Canaan, we were creating a family. And I think, you know, when you're creating a family, you're like, well, is it going to feel like a family? Is that dynamic going to feel organic and real? And I, I, I may have even mentioned this before in another interview. You know, there's a scene in the first episode of the first season in our sort of pilot episode where the family's around the dining room table and it's, it's a slightly heated scene. And in that moment, I remember thinking like, oh, wow this is, I get it. Like, this is a family. This, it feels like a family. It sounds like a family. And that was the moment where I was like, okay, th this is going to work. You know, we've really, and it was actually kind of early on in, uh, we shot that scene, I think kind of early. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, really, it, it's hard to sort of even articulate it, put into words what that feels like, because you just don't know. And again, as a writer, you know, the best feeling is when the material that you that you have is taken to a place that you didn't expect. It's better than what you could have ever anticipated. And, and I, I have that feeling pretty much on a daily basis on, uh, on this show. So it feels like because that is authentic with the cast that you've chosen, that the authenticity has bled through, you know, into the story. So speaking of authenticity, this is 1991 that we're recreating. It feels like so much 
research and time and effort went into getting this right. I was around then. I remember what we were wearing and you guys have gotten it down. Like, what was that process like? You know, again, we're so fortunate to have incredible people, you know, because obviously to your point, Don, the, the clothes, the cars, the music, all that stuff uh, really is, again, sort of organically connected to the story we're telling. And it's really, really important in terms of creating the atmosphere and the vibe and, 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 and making it feel real. So that's, that's been a real challenge, especially as it relates to the wardrobe. But we have amazing people, Frank Fleming, Sagay White, uh, who have tracked down, you know, all the clothes they possibly can from 1991. Um, and, you know, the cars, it's the same thing. I mean, again, these are, you know, these are things that maybe a viewer might take for granted, but the amount of effort that it takes to get that stuff is, it's like, you know, it's, it, it's, it's massive. Um, so thank you for noticing. <laughs> I'm glad too. Patina, some of your fits are amazing. <laughs> they are pretty amazing, huh? <laughs> they are pretty amazing. <laughs> that, that, I, I've been very lucky, very lucky. Yeah. They, the, the costume department, Frank and Sigay, have really, um, and they turned it out. They really did, you know? To be able as an actor to just focus on the acting and not have to worry about the clothing and every, the hair, we this team is really so incredible because not only you know we have a great costume department but our our beauty department our hair department everybody just works at such a high level and everybody cares so much so you just get to step in and play you know it doesn't it doesn't feel heavy you know you don't have to worry about all these other things because it's all taken care of and so for me being able to wear some of the flyest fits um, and, and say the things that Raquel gets to say, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. She's like the best super villain. Like, that's what I've started calling her. <laughs> and you love her and you hate her. And I love that. Right. right? Like, it's like you hate her, but then it's like, damn, she looks so fly. Like, come, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and like, dang, but she loves everybody so hard. Right. She that's loves everybody so much, but like, oh, uh, she did send her son to do something but god she loves everybody <laughs> she does right. she does so this maybe should have been at the beginning of everything but um how do you guys see um it going forward i know you can't tell me a bunch but you're shooting season two now we, we, in the completed, middle of it. we completed season you two completed? Yep. okay yeah yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, obviously for, 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 you know, those, those who've watched, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of tension. I mean, I think, again, as you said, Don, I mean, it is this origin story for Canaan. So a lot of this is going to be sort of about how Canaan becomes Canaan. Um, and as we all know, a lot of that has to do with our parents, you know, or, or whoever is standing in for our parents, you know, we're, we're, we're influenced and impacted by the people around us when we're younger. Um, so a lot of it will be about that, but again, you know, it really is, it's, you know, it's a family drama. And as we all know, families have no shortage of drama. Um, mm -hmm. and I think, <laughs> I think that, uh, I think that, you know, we really, we're going to see, fractures and, and fights and, and reconciliation. I mean, it's, you know, in that way, as we're saying, it's, it's sort of true to life. Like this is, this is the stuff families go through. Um, but again, rock is sort of the center of the universe. And so to a certain extent, everyone kind of revolves around her and how she goes is how everyone else goes. So, you know, uh, and her, you know, her romantic life, her relationship with Kane, all these things are, are very much up in the air at the end of season at the end of season one, there's some revelations that are obviously very complicated. So, you know, it will be more of the same. I'd say, you know, it, as, as things wear on, it gets a little bit more dangerous. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot that happens. New, new characters are introduced who are sort of problematic in different ways. So I don't know, there's a lot to expect. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I, I always love to say when people ask me about, you know, the one in the first, um, episode she talks about um Cassiopeia holding on to the throne and I and I for me that's I love to tell people you know 
rock at the end. She's smiling. She has the throne. But I, the second season is about holding on for dear life. And will she, you know what I mean? It's like this, 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 it's, everything is just super, the stakes are so raised and, and they're, they're, it's, it's a lot of stuff happening for her. And will she stay on the throne? Like, what will it take to keep the power? So, you know. Yeah. Things never, things never go as planned in the power nope. universe, you know? And so, and as soon as you get comfortable, you know, oh, yeah. the rug gets pulled out from under you. So. <laughs> so there's a lot of, and I don't think I'm giving too much away by saying this. There's a lot of bloody murder, death, kill, you know, because it is, it, even though it's a family, it's a crime drama and that happens. Yeah. Um, Sasha, did you ever write something where you surprised yourself with the brutality of it? Patina, did you ever get a script and your mouth drop open? Well, the, oh. the go ahead, Sasha. <laughs> you go, no, you go first. You go first. I want to hear the answer to this before I answer. <laughs> um, you know, I think the first episode, uh, the one, the one thing there, I don't want to give it away for, for people who haven't watched, but yeah, there were a couple of moments, but then you know, anytime I ever talked about, like, I had a question about it, Sasha was always like, yeah, but he's really good at explaining it and, and getting you on board with and seeing it. So, like, you, you answer it. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, I, I, I grew up on movies like, you know, The Godfather and Goodfellas and, you know, uh, you know, juice and this and you know love the sopranos you know there's there's violence in all those in all those uh in all those uh shows and movies and you know listen you know the the horse head in uh the godfather was a seminal moment for me as i remember seeing that the first time as a kid i was watching it with my dad i was just being like wow like they can do that <laughs> you know <laughs> so i feel like that's that's one of those watershed moments in my writing career i was like oh wow okay well if you could do that to a horse we're all right, you know? That opens up a lot of doors. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, okay. Um, but it's so, not, I will have to say, it's not violence just, just for violence sake. Right, everything right. comes out of these real, like, you know, it's, it's consequence, right? Like everything you do has a consequence and it's not just violence for the sake of violence. These are really like these deaths and anything you see Sasha, you go ahead. You you tell us so much better. No, than no, it's 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 a great point. I mean, I think one of the things we talk a lot about in the writers' room is making sure that it doesn't feel cartoonish. You know, is that it doesn't. We're not that that to to, to use Patina's word, the violence is consequential. It matters. You know, there's a loss. You know, I mean, there's you know, obviously, and I'm not giving anything away. There there are characters that die, um, and characters that matter that die. And I think what we want to make sure is that you feel those losses profoundly. Um, cause otherwise if it just, if it's just, you know, if it just feels like I said, cartoonish, then you don't care. And if you don't care, then why are you watching the show? Right. Um, and so that's really, you know, that's an important part of what we do. And it also ties into the fact that the show is, we, we know what happens to Kanan's character in, right. in the original power. So right. the fact that it starts from that means that it has to kind of be born from that. Um, speaking of Curtis, Mr. Curtis 50 Cent Jackson, um, his narration is really key to this. Um, do you do that in, in the process? Do you do that before or after? Like, does he visit the set to try to get a feel of everything that's going on before he does that? He definitely comes by the set. You know, I, I mean, 50 is, is, uh, is involved in, in every aspect of this. Um, you know, the, the, the VO that, that you hear voiceover, you know, that's written into the script. So when, when the, when people see the script, you know, it's, it's there, it changes, uh, from time to time. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it was always, when I first met with Courtney and 50, what they said to me was we want to make, um, Goodfellas as a television series, you know, uh, as they called it, Hoodfellas. <laughs> and if you remember, you know, Henry Hill, the character, you know, does VO, does, you know, narrates all of Goodfellas. So it was always going to be part of Raising Canaan, you know, um, it was, and that we were going to have Canaan sort of speak from the grave and talk about what's going on and sort of share some sort of wisdom with the viewers each and every week. So that's always been a part of, uh, of, of the show. Okay. Well, is there 
anything, any, I've asked you this before, I have to ask it again. Is there anything that you can give the fans before we call this a day? Hmm. Oh, she wants, uh, she's trying to get a little uh, tea. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just a little tea. <laughs> That's going to be Sasha because I. Um, is there anything? Uh, I guess what I would say is that the end of our second season, uh, there are alliances, that there are, are alliances that are formed that you would not expect and relationships that are fractured that you wouldn't expect. And that, again, you know, don't get comfortable and don't get too attached to anybody because, uh, you know, it's rough out there. It's rough out you there. You think you know, but you just don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's what I would say. But Don, I wanted to thank you, by the way, for for taking the time to talk to us Absolutely. and uh, and and you know let us share a little bit of what's going on. But yeah, that's I think that's that's it. And also, I, I also just want to point out you said this, Don, and I think it's I, I always try to mention this, which is you don't have to have watched the original mm-hmm. Power to watch Raising Canaan. Um, right. It is. It exists on its own. And if you've never watched a minute of power, you still will have no problem accessing this series. And, and what we hope is that if you, if you haven't watched a minute of power, you'll watch this and then you'll want to watch the rest of them as well. So uh, I just, I just always like to mention that because I think some people get intimidated by the fact that it's power book three and they think they have to have watched everything that came before. And that's just not the case. Yeah. That's the beauty of this one in particular is that you can just dive in. Um, yeah. So, Patina, Sasha, I want to thank you again so much for taking the time to talk with me about Power Book Three, Raising Canaan. As you can probably tell, I am a fan. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Yes. And I want to thank everyone watching for joining us in the Envelope Live screening series. And we hope to see you soon. Until next time. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.